Welcome back. Well, today's finally the day we're going to install this tank. So the pad's all done, as you saw in the last video, and that's the dam I have for the runoff. Our truck arrives, and at the last minute, he decides to go right instead of left. And after some heavy rains we've been having, it took a few seconds, and he was stuck in a trench. Um, not an ideal start, but I agree with the guys. Look, don't worry about it. I'll excavate the truck out, and if they could just get on and build the tank. So it comes in a kit form. There was a bit of extra walking uh, because of this problem, but not such a big deal. Firstly, everything's offloaded on the from the truck. You can see the light marking where the tank edge is going to go. Now, this pad is 12.2 metres diameter, and the tank is actually 10.2 metres. It's um, about 2.3 metres high, so for you guys and girls in America, that's 7.5 feet and 10.2 meters is around 33 and a half feet diameter. It holds 185,000 liters or about 50,000 gallons. The tank is from Heritage. Now you'll see the guys have got Kingspan shirts. Now Kingspan actually bought out Heritage, so that's the reason for that. As far as I know, Kingspan tanks are slightly different to Heritage tanks. So I'm quite happy with this Heritage tank. It comes in a range of colours. The corrugated metal is one millimetre, so it's nice and thick. And, you know, it's a pretty sturdy design. And it has a 20-year warranty. The first stage is they go around and do the first uh, layer. And there's three layers. And it's pretty simple. This whole build was done in one day. So they first go around, put a few bolts in it, and then they... Uh, progressively do the second and third layers. Now prep work is important so you saw in the last video having a solid base and having it level is important and I did spend quite a bit of time getting that right so I was within about five millimeters so when the guys rolled up there was really no work for them to do rework it was just a matter of get straight into it and then once this layer goes on they've got that ladder there so they can get in and out so you can see that hole right at the end that's for the overflow now they get all the way around and it will drop that that overflow is actually not where I want it to be and it's not a big deal um, undo a couple of sheets swap them around and it's problem solved now at this point they're putting uh, all the screws in tightening them all up and then once they're tightened up a protective tape is placed over the inside to protect between the, the screw heads and the liner that tape goes around every join and just protects the liner from, you know, ever having a hole punctured through it for whatever reason. The next stage is to fit the trusses and that just simply gets bolted to the top layer of corrugated iron. There's four trusses and that simply holds up the roof sheeting. Once they're on, the next stage is to fit the liner and it's a reinforced food grade liner. It's 100% BPA free and it's multi-layered. Apparently it has seven layers. And this is what you need if you want to create potable water. Once the liner goes in, it's attached to the top. And the other thing is there is an option for vermin proofing. So given we got a few nasty critters in Australia, I decided to go that way and it's simply a bit of foam and it just seals off the gaps between the corrugated iron roof and the outer shell and just provides that bit of protection. Now the main thing with the rainwater tank is you don't want any sunlight getting into the water because that'll stop algae growing. And with it, uh, with the vermin proofing as well, I don't have to worry about insects or spiders or whatever else getting in there, mosquitoes. The roof goes on. It's quite good. Uh, the, the trusses, you know, they're strong enough to hold that roof up and one person. Ideally, you know, probably would have been nice to have a fifth truss, but this is more than adequate for what it's doing. So they progressively go around and install the roof, and then once the roof's all on, they measure out the circumference and cut around the edge to create a small overhang of probably two to three inches. Now, one of the options with these tanks is you can get a gutter system for them, but I'll go through exactly how I want to use this in the next video 
but essentially I'm using this tank as clean water storage so I'm going to filter incoming water and I, by having a gutter system it just provides another spot where you can get dust and leaves into the tank which is what I want to avoid. Once the roof's on it's just blown off of any swarf because you don't want to have swarf sitting on any roof because it will create rust fairly quickly. All the protective plastic is removed around the tank and then another option is a level indicator it's very simple just on a float but I thought it would be nice to know how much is in the tank and then there's these covers that go over the bolt so there's a couple more to go and the other thing is this tank is protected by these anodes which we'll see in a moment that's the outlet two inch stainless steel valves and that's one of the anodes. So there's four anodes. It's essentially an electrical connection between the tank and the ground. And there's a bag in the ground of magnesium. And that magnesium just acts as an anode and sacrifices itself to protect the tank. A bit like it does with a hot water service. So this is the finished install. There's a decent gap around the edge between the retaining wall and the tank. There's another anode. As I said, there's four of those. And then once the guys were done, I finished off the piping. The other thing I did is created the trench, as you see around here, around the back of the hill. So as the rain falls, uh, it, it diverts around the tank as much as possible. Now I'm on a bushfire prone property. There was a bushfire here about three years ago. So one thing I'm doing is using not only a metal tank, but all metal connections that are above ground to reduce any risk of pipes melting. So this is copper. I use copper for the first probably foot underground. It's 32 mil blue line plastic and it's inch and a quarter copper. And whilst the outlet valve is two inch, I don't need it that big. And I'm just feeding my filtration system, which I'll build shortly. You'll see in a moment, moment once I connect this, the blue line goes underground and then it comes out of the ground about 10 metres from this point and that's where I'm going to build a little pump shed and it's about the same level as a tank so the water will simply just push out of there by gravity. This is another poly pipe, it's a green line because it's a lower pressure line and this is the transfer to the tank. So all water to this tank will be pumped through a transfer pump and I'll go through that in the next video. Around the entire thing is 20 mil gravel just to stop erosion. This is the overflow which goes into a second dam I have right next to this tank. And this is the incoming water supply. Well, we still have a bit more rain and I've got a chance to start collecting some water and there's a tank in the distance and it was shortly after that we got this really nice rainbow. In the next video, I'll go through exactly how I plan to use this system. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I'll try to address those as well. See you in the next video.